Here's another example of partial fraction decomposition. We're going to integrate x squared minus 5x plus 16 over 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared. And we'll do so by breaking this down into partial fractions. So normally we would start by factoring the denominator, but this one's already factored for us. So things are a little bit easier. We get to skip the first step. And we can jump straight to setting up the partial fractions. So in this case we have a factor 2x plus 1, which will get its own partial fraction. And then the second factor, x minus 2, is repeated. So we need b over x minus 2, and we need c over x minus 2 squared. Again, if you need to, you can go back and review setting up the partial fractions and look specifically at the one with repeated factors. In that case, we need to use this kind of form. So now we just need to solve for a, b, and c. And as always, we'll start by multiplying both sides by that left-hand denominator, which on the left side just leaves its numerator. And on the right side, the first term cancels the 2x plus 1. The second term cancels one of the x minus 2s. So we'll have 2x plus 1 and x minus 2. And the last term cancels both of the x minus 2s. So we'll just have 2x plus 1 left. Now again, you could multiply everything out and equate the powers of x squared and x and the constant on both sides, but I find it simpler to use test values. So notice that x equals 2 is going to make our lives easy because several of these terms will drop off. The other one, what makes 2x plus 1 equal 0, is negative 1 half. And then we just need a third value. We'll use, again, x equals 1 to make life easy. When x equals 2, the left-hand side equals 4 minus 10, that's negative 6, plus 16, that's 10. And then on the right-hand side, everything with an x minus 2 factor will disappear. So those first two terms will both be 0. And all that's left is c times 5. So that means c equals 2. When x equals negative 1 half, that makes things a little bit more complicated on the left side because we'll have 1 fourth minus 5 times negative a half, so plus 5 halves, plus 16. And then on the right side, anything with a 2x plus 1 will cancel. So those are both gone, leaving just a times x minus 2 squared. So negative 1 half minus 2 will be negative 5 halves, and when you square it, you get 25 fourths. So here I have to deal with fractions. Again, to solve for this, one way to deal with it is to multiply everything by 4 so that that clears things out. So we would have 1 plus 10 plus 64 equals 25a. So 25a is equal to 75, or a equals 3. Then lastly, if we plug in x equals 1, on the left side we get 1 minus 5, that's negative 4, plus 16 is 12. And then on the right side, we get a times negative 1 squared, plus b times 3 times negative 1 plus c times 3. And we know what a and c are, so 12 equals 3 minus 3b plus 6. And so you can figure out that b equals negative 1. Which means that x squared minus 5x plus 16 over 2x plus 1 times x minus 2 squared is equal to 3 over 2x plus 1 minus 1 over x minus 2 plus 2 over x minus 2 squared. Which means if we want to integrate this left side, we can integrate these partial fractions and find our answer the same way. Now, on this one, the first term, we can still take a shortcut 
but we have to be careful and you should go back and review the u substitution section to make sure you're comfortable doing this step. Because when we do this, we're actually going to end up with 3 halves times the natural log of 2x plus 1. The reason for that is because if u equals 2x plus 1, when we make our substitution, we need a 1 half in our substituted form to account for that 2 in du. If that doesn't make sense, go back to the u substitution section and review ones like this. But if you can follow that and you can do that that quickly, you can skip the work. Otherwise, you should pause and do the u substitution step in detail to get from 3 over 2x plus 1 to the answer 3 halves natural log of 2x plus 1. The others are much more straightforward. The next step is just minus the natural log of x minus 2. And then on the last one, again, we'll do a u substitution where we would have 2 over u squared after we define u equals x minus 2. And so when you integrate, you just get minus 2 over u or minus 2 over x minus 2. And so there's our answer. This one, you might need to pause and do several steps of the integration in a little more detail. But if you can follow those jumps, you can avoid writing down some of the u substitution steps.